Hello, I'm going to call to order the Mount Dabble Unified School District Governing Board meeting for February 9th, 2022. I'm going to start with roll call. Vice President Nzewi? Here. Trustee Mayo? Here. Trustee McFerrin? Here. Trustee Cowan? Here. And Trustee Mason is here. We will start with public comments. The public may address the board concerning items that are scheduled for discussion during closed session only. Kip Pinovich. I've gone, am I going? Uh, I have gone over uh, through the first interim and I've gone through multiple years of audited reports on the district site. And I wanna share some stuff with you. Uh, from the first interim, your books and supplies are budgeted at $49 million. Uh, in the last five years, the most you have ever spent is 16 million. That would make you 33 million over the highest you've ever spent. Your capital outlay is about 10 million. You never spent more than 4 million there. In your services and other operating expenditures, you're budgeted at 49 million. Never spent more than 41 million. Between those three categories, you're over budgeted in expenditures by $46 million. Um, your total salaries between classified and certificated keep going up. You're proposing some cuts. I don't see any of that reflected in the multi-year projection yet. Um, your COLA for the first interim on the multi-year projection, this year it shows 5.07, perfect. Next year it shows 2.48. So they haven't updated to the school services 5.33, which most people think is like gospel, or the LAO projection of just over 6%, which will bring you more revenue. When it comes to the revenue side, if you look at the accompanying data on your first interim for your ADA, uh, in the past three years, the district has claimed ADA of 95 uh, or percent uh, attendance, 95.6, 94.8, and last year, 98.4. For this year, they are projecting 90%. And our ADA, which has been around 29,000, they have it all the way down at 26,000. So that's, in my estimation, that makes it look like you're claiming we're gonna lose 3,000 kids. Don't think so, not that much. So that means your revenue is lower than it should be. Between those two, people more familiar with fiscal things than I am would say, you're flush with cash and you're just playing fiscal whack-a-mole and it should stop. If you have it, it needs to be shown. What you do with it, that we need to have discussion for. Now, one other thing, which I'm not as much certain about, STRS contributions. In the last two years, if you look at the STRS contribution rate for the employer, 16.15% and 17%, that would translate last year to about 24 million that the district would have paid. For some reason, we paid 38 million. So we paid 14, almost $15 million more into STRS than the percent dictated. This year in the first interim, it's the same. It's showing that we're paying 15 million more than the percent dictates. I'd like to know why. Thank you. Thank you. Melissa Pratchard. Okay, that, I know you're not Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, I am not. Unfortunately, my member is not able to um, attend, but she sent me her um, speech. Okay, She has a, a small child and uh, she can't afford to um, pay for childcare. Says, my name is Melissa Pratcher and I am the office manager of Ahala Elementary. I am not here to shame you. I understand that cuts need to be made. However, I think you might be cutting in the wrong places. What I don't understand is those suggesting cuts either haven't been to a school site, haven't worked at a school site, or truly don't understand the way these positions affect our students. I know, I know you say enrollment is declining, but not our Bahala. In fact, it's rising. As of today, we have 603 students with two more starting this Friday. That's more than we have pre-pandemic with two less teachers and more students. Suggesting that we cut instrument music, I played clarinet for a few months in fifth grade. 
It didn't stick with me, however. I see how important it is for our students. I understand that it might not benefit every child at once, but when you get to fourth and fifth grade, they look forward to that opportunity. Music is a stress reliever and beneficial to our students. Please don't take that away. Have you guys been to the warehouse lately? I've done three walkthroughs in the last month or so to pick up things our school needs because our warehouse guys are vastly understaffed. MNO is a whole uh, as it is. Getting rid of more position there is a complete joke. I challenge you to put on your workout clothes and go help them for a day, even a half a day. I'm just naming a handful of cuts. Again, I understand cuts need to be made. May I suggest the higher ups at the district office take a pay cut to help the greater good? I've heard of pay raises and bonuses to those in higher positions. Me too, I heard that. Yet the lower positions are struggling at some, and some are losing their jobs. I'm just going to remind you that I make roughly $88,000 a year, although the position control says I make 66, which is deceiving to our parents and community. I don't even get health benefits. I have a state insurance because my pay is low enough to qualify. That's embarrassing. That's me saying. So I don't understand how that up. Even with CalPERS, my stipend for not getting health insurance and our dental, which everybody's dental office seems to be dropping, doesn't add up. I have a bachelor's degree. I manage our school and people who work at in and out make more money than I do. Something is very wrong here. Even the pay difference from our lowest paid teachers to our office staff is easily 20,000 a year and we work far more days a year than they do. The only difference is I haven't taken the test to become a teacher, but I could pass it tomorrow if I want, if that was my passion. I'm not trying to put teachers against office staff, but I do want to point out that your site office staff, many of them have degrees, are far underpaid. Again, no employee should have to be in government assistance, which I am. If all CST were to walk out today, schools wouldn't function. function. Thank you. Thank you. And in all due respect, as we go forward, negotiations are what we'll be talking about in closed session. The cuts will be later in the agenda. So that was about 50-50. Okay, Gail and Ryan. Good evening, board members and superintendent. I am reading this on behalf of Galen Ryan. My name is Cheryl Barrett. I'm on the negotiation team. Dear MDUSD board, I am writing to you about Dr. Clark's proposed position cuts and the union's attempts to negotiate a salary increase. I have read public messages from Dr. Clark and Dr. Gonzalez over the past several months, informing community that our desire for an increase of 7% is a reason the district now has to cut the positions and other budget expenses. Firstly, this is not true. The district has been talking about a budget deficit for years before we were finally able to start the salary negotiations. Secondly, and most upsetting to me, is the district using their communication platforms to try to paint their employees in such a bad light. They are framing our negotiations as greed and attempting to swore public opinion against us while the union has no such platform with the same reach available to us. Stating this district's offer is 7%, without mentioning it is spread over three years, is very misleading. Getting 3% or less each year for three years is quite different from one time 7% increase. The district should at last share the information accurately. For me, a 3% increase would mean $132 before taxes and deductions. I will see very little difference in my net pay. If any, PG&E bills have skyrocketed over the past month. The increase wouldn't even cover that one bill. As far as the proposed layoffs, why is the board continuing to approve new man management positions if we weren't and cannot afford our existing positions or a decent raise? 
Thank you. Thank you. Carmen Taronis. Yes. Hello. Um, mine is on um, the for information only um, proposal that has been presented to the board. Um, there's a couple of items there, item 6, 16, 23, 24, positions that have been, uh, I guess, eliminated or vacant for almost two years. If the um, budget pr uh, presentation that have been provided by the CBO lately have included all these positions, that's over $300,000 that have not been spent, no need to have it on the budget. Eliminating six FT career college advisors, do they know what they do? You know how closely these ladies work with the counselors? Who's going to do the work? The registrars? The secretaries that they are looking into possible cut? I don't know how they're going to manage that. Um, closing the Yablo Day, the students could be served by the county. Maybe that will work for the uh, Bay Point, Pittsburgh area. But I have sat in meetings, parents meetings, and those families that live in this area, Pleasant Hill, Concord area, when, they, when we propose for them to go to the Martinez site, they can't afford it. Are we gonna provide transportation? That's another expense. If we close Diablo Day, where are those kids? Right now, yes, they probably have only eight kids there, but we, are, we have been in, during the pandemic last year, we were not here, students were not suspended, students were not expelled, which this year is just starting to. Where are those kids gonna go? Uh, then eliminating, oh, combining, uh, where is home and hospital gonna go? If we're eliminating all that. Is there a combination, they combining this program with something else? I mean, right now, Clayton Valley Charter doesn't have home and hospital. Those students are coming here. We have over 400 students in the home and hospital program. We have over a thousand students in the John Muir, in and out. How are we gonna serve that community? Has anybody really looked into this proposal? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Dan Harper. Good evening, board members, superintendent. Um, I'll be speaking to negotiations, which you all are getting ready mm -hmm. to go talk about. So. Um, I'm the staff rep and uh, lead negotiator for CST, and um, you may already know we went to impasse on January 24th. Um, our first mediation session was confirmed today for March 15th. Um, I think every single union in the district, if, except maybe one, is at impasse right now. You know, that's not a good thing. I mean, we're, we're not going in a good direction here. Um, I think, you know, you've heard this a million times before, but I'm, I'm going to restate things a little differently to, to point out a few things. So um, with the proposed cuts that came out last Friday, you know, one thing that is disturbing is that, you know, all of it, first of all, um, we have pointed out where money can be found to pay for this, but, you know, one of the pieces was, um, around CST's vacation payout of $200,000. Why didn't management bring that up in negotiations with the proposal? It's like, I mean, it just seems like an unfair labor practice right there, trying to you know, use that later as a bargaining chip to take away. It's in our contract. You can't just unilaterally take that away. Um, so it is related. So, you know, the, the cuts coming out at this point in time, yeah, it, it comes across, obviously, as an attempt to try to chill organizing that's happening right now, um, labor strife that's building up, as you all are very aware of. Um, and, you know, we think you need to do everything in your power to try to avoid a strike. I'm telling you, people are pretty upset right now. And, um, you know, it's looking like, you know, People don't want to do that, but that looks like where things are going, unless you can talk to your team, to the superintendent, start, you know, taking a better look at our numbers. We, I mean, we've done the math. We've got together as union coalition to look at this, and we really think it's there. We're not trying to harm the students, you know, the quality of education that anyone is getting here. 
And it, it does feel like we're being pit against parents with the way communications are coming out as um, someone said earlier. So, you know, we've done the math. We believe the district can afford it with what's coming in. We also know that the district is going to be getting quite a bit more money from the state this year in the form of COLA. Why can't that be used on wages as it should be? Um, so we urge you to do everything in your power, which you have in the next hour to turn this around. Uh, you know, I'm sure we'll probably be back here, but you know, I really, we don't wanna see that happen. So thank you for your time. And we urge you to do everything in your power to turn this around. Thank you. Thank you. Chloe Park. Sheila Bergen. Hi everybody, I'm Sheila Burgum. I'm the College and Career Advisor at Concord High School. I'm gonna give you an example of the impact of the work we do to show you why this position is essential in supporting our students. I organize- Is this about negotiations or about the cuts? Uh, this is about my role as a college and career advisor because people don't know what we do. I'm just trying to inform. I understand, but that would be covered later in our agenda. Right now, we're, we only take public comments on things that we're covering a closed session, which would be the cuts. I mean, the um, negotiations. My board? Excuse me? I, I think you're going to have to All right. I'll wait. Thank you. How many minutes will we have tonight? Do you know? Hopefully three. We're going to go 30 minutes. I would though, appreciate so. that since nobody knows what we do. Okay. Um, Dan Reynolds. Good evening. Mount W Unified School District's students deserve the best. And that means having a highly qualified teacher in every classroom and a highly qualified educator in every position across all of the employment positions in our district. As you head into your closed session to discuss negotiations, I would like to remind you, you do not have a structural deficit. You ended last year with an increase in your ending fund balance having it go from in the 40s of millions of dollars up to $89 million. This year, there is still $50 million in anticipated revenue from the state and federal government that is not yet being reflected in the budgets that you're being shown. Add to that the fact that next year, the COLA that the Legislative Analyst Office is projecting is 6.17%, the largest COLA we've seen in decades. That COLA alone, built on the enrollment numbers that your staff are already giving you, will bring in an additional $8 million beyond the multi-year projections in the first interim. Add to that the fact that it is strongly expected that the legislature will approve a new funding formula for average daily attendance. When you put the increased COLA and the new three-year rolling average ADA together, it means that this district will have more than $20 million more next year than what is currently in the multi-year projections that you have been shown. You can afford to give all of your employee units a 12.5% salary increase over three years, especially considering that it will actually be over a six-year period because the board reneged on a 5.5% increase in 2020. And over the period between 2017 and the end of a three-year term in 2024, your per student LCFF income will have increased by cumulative 25%. Direct your bargaining team to settle a just and fair contract. If you don't have time to get through that discussion between now and your 6 p.m. open session, go back to your closed session. Please don't go home tonight until you have directed your team to settle fair and just contracts with your employee units. Thank you. Thank you. 
Miss Santos. Miss Santos. Miss Santos. Oh, and that one's already spoken. Okay, that concludes our public comment. We will be now adjourned to our closed session. Thank you. Good job, buddy.